up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to this week's Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and you are... Rolly. From Theo and Harris. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the white gold uh, Tiffany stamped Omega that Phillips Auction is going to be offering. It was once owned by Elvis Presley himself. So let's do it. The king. The king. All right, quick wristwatch check. You are wearing what? I'm still keeping this guy on, the Beautiful Panerai camera. Radio Mirror. Love it. We did a whole unboxing of this watch. Uh, talked about what, what the Panerai brand meant to you and, and, and journey getting one for yourself uh, yes. in an episode uh, of Liquor Run. The link to that episode is in the description below. Uh, you guys should definitely watch it because it's a very important piece of this whole like company. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. It's a very important piece of our history with watches. And we have an exciting episode that we'll be recording about this watch again. Too, the right? straps. The straps. We're, we're on this like this like strap, you know, uh, uh, hunt, you yes. know, for the for the best watch straps to put on this Panerai. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship with Atelier Jean Rousseau, and, and, it's, and it's a wonderful, wonderful strap manufacturer. I think some of the best in the world. Uh, and we have a whole collection of them in the shop. But, but for Panerai, um, there are there are specialists. Yes. You know, there there are there are hundreds of Panerai strap specialists, um, which Jean Rousseau is not. So uh, so we really dove into it, and we're trying to find the best Panerai strap. And people are stepping up. Oh yeah, people! This is this is going to be a serious war. Unbelievable. But um, but that's it. Uh, I'm wearing a yellow gold. <laughs> I'm wearing a yellow gold date chest, a presidential bracelet, and gilt dial. Uh, beautiful watch. So uh, let's get into the topic now. Um, not even a year ago, Phillips Auction House brought forth Paul Newman's Rolex date. Right. Time. I have the catalog right there. Yeah. Right? I witnessed it. Yep. It sold just under eighteen million dollars, all in, including buyer's premium. Serious money. Mm -hmm. But now, Phillips Auction is bringing forth another uh, uh, notable, you know, notable watch. You know, with, with, with real, uh, you know, celebrity, you know, heritage. Elvis is Omega, and no one thinks that Elvis is Omega is going to go for the numbers that Paul Newman's, you know, watch is going to went for. But I think it's very interesting. You know, let's let's talk about why. You know, what makes Paul Newman more important than Elvis? Even though, at least in my understanding, Elvis is way more famous than Paul Newman. That's a great question. You know? So I why is Paul so. Newman so much better in the watch industry? Well, let's talk about it. Why is a lobster more expensive than a pear? Right! That's Who, who said that originally? That was... Ferralia. Ferralia? Yeah. Yes, it was. Why? Isn't that... It just, it's a wonderful episode of Anthony Bourdain. It was with decoding for Andrea, yeah, right? right. And he's talking about just the most... Humble, simple foods, and saying, "Why is that worse?" You know, yeah. there's no reason. Yeah. You know, I mean, realistically, it, 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 or or the reason that a lobster is more expensive has nothing to do with the quality. It doesn't. You know, it's it's, it's other variables. <laughs> that's right. You know, difficulty of to obtain. Yeah. Doesn't make it quality though. It doesn't, and that's why this is going to be fun. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what are we drinking though? Uh, Quick. We're drinking balsamic vinegar. <laughs> Uh, we're drinking Carlo Rossi. Carlo Rossi. Burgundy. We're keeping with the tradition here for it. two episodes. We, we jumped into why we're drinking Carlo Rossi on last week's episode. Um, it was awesome. You know, it's a traditional working class Italian wine. Uh, I grew up drinking it. Um, you guys should watch the last episode. Where we talked about the Hoyer Carrera and its, and its evolution. Right. So let's drink this wine uh, and, and talk about Elvis V. Paul Newman. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Okay. First off. Elvis, although famous for jewelry, he had a beautiful King Midas Rolex, beautiful Omega Constellation. The guy is, is famous for all things jewelry. Right. But Paul Newman is particularly famous in the watch world. Right. Okay. Not because he was this tremendous watch aficionado, mm -hmm. but because uh, the watch world saw him wearing a Rolex chronograph one time and named it after him. You know, that's it. Uh, to my understanding, Paul right. Newman did not put fuel on the fire here. Right. You know, Paul Newman cared so little about the Rolex chronograph that he just gave it to like his daughter's boyfriend. Right. You know, so it's kind of funny. Neither one of these people, Elvis or Paul Newman, is particularly important, or their role isn't particularly important in the watch world. You know, neither of them really made influence. Right. You know, or or, or intentionally made influence, but one person, Paul Newman, is looked at as this tremendous icon. Yes. And the other, uh, we'll see how Elvis is perceived. All right, so forgetting the names, yep. just looking at the watches, mm -hmm. I think the, the, the Rolex, the Daytona, has, has more appeal 
Then the Omega with the, with the crown, the, be- the diamond, diamond bezel. bezel. That agree. may have something to do with it. Uh, totally different. It plays style. a role. Definitely I, it plays I, a role. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it does. As far as, you know, celebrity status, I mean, geez, who's bigger than the king, Elvis himself? Right. right? I mean, I genuinely I mean, don't know if there's a bigger international celebrity bona than Bonafide, right? Uh, yeah, international star, you know, global star. I, I, I can't imagine... I can't imagine like really going all over the world and, and, and people not knowing Elvis. No, right? uh, Elvis but, changed music. But go uh, down the block and ask yeah. someone to name three Paul Newman movies, and I don't think they can. Like genuinely. No, that's right. I'm not saying Paul Newman yeah. is a nobody. He's a yeah. tremendous star. That's right. No, that's right. But name three movies. Right. You would have a harder time figuring out what you know some of Paul Newman's accomplishments outside of a, 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 a film geek. Right. You know, uh, people that really watch films, Elvis, man, you can just wrap it up. What would most people say about Paul Newman? The Caesar dressing. The what? The Caesar dressing. See, I wouldn't even know. The Caesar salad, the, the Newman's. Oh, yeah, no, no, you're right, yeah. That's, what, like, that's what movie was that's, that. No, no, that's what people's <laughs> mind would go. Yeah. Like, oh, the guy from the Caesar dressing. You know, which is just. I would think, uh, I would. You, you're right about that. You're right, that's the legacy. That's the lasting legacy. Yeah. But this thing, right? Wasn't he in that with the Robert Redford? I have. I, yeah. Yes, right, yeah. says yes. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. You know? But tell anyone, Elvis Presley. <laughs> Boom. That's right. You know, it's, everyone would know that. Like, Blue Christmas. I know it's a yeah. bad rendition yeah, of it, but you know what I'm point. Like, yeah. everyone knows Blue Christmas. Blue suede shoes. Everyone knows these songs. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of funny that... <laughs> <laughs> we live in this little, like this little yeah. watch world. Yes. Where, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. You really can't even compare the star power of these two people, and yet one is just so much more important. Can can you really? Well, you know what? So he. So I'm thinking about this as, 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 we're, as we're talking. Is a El- Elvis also El- Elvis was also lived in the world of excess and jewelry, and a lot of Elvis's. Jewelry and watches. They're out. Made it out. Oh yeah. Because he traded. He, you know, there was a lot of stuff that he well, put out there. Right. Well, my 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 cousin is is a enormous, yes. enormous, disgusting Elvis yes. fan. I mean, he's got signed handkerchiefs. He has everything all over his house. Right. Uh, not all. He over, even but dresses his, like him yeah, still. No, no, he does not. <laughs> um, uh, but. He'll even tell you, you know, uh, 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 Colonel, uh, uh, Colonel Parker had to tape or, or tape or band-aid Elvis's right. knuckles so he wouldn't take off his rings. And, and give it away. Because he would just yeah. give away right. tens of thousands of dollars right. in jewelry. Right. And Colonel Parker was like, buddy, <laughs> relax. You know, so it, 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 that's funny too. I mean, how much, how much, or, or, or how many pieces of jewelry or collectible items of Paul Newman's are out there? Elvis's we know are out there. You know, they've sold Elvis's hair before. Right. It went up for auction not that long ago. I think right. it was maybe four years ago. Elvis's hair was sold. So it, it really, it really is, it really is crazy. Yeah. You know, and definitely a jewelry guy. But like you said before. Yeah. Uh, Rolex versus Omega. A Rolex is more important. Chronographs are more important than time only. Yeah. So, you know, sports watches are more important than dress watches, and, and and diamonds are not very widely liked by by men. So it's it's you know for so many reasons. The, the the Paul Newman you know is more is more desirable on a fundamental level. Yeah. But it's funny that we've created this in disproportionate amount of star power in Paul Newman that just doesn't exist for Elvis in this little world. <laughs> it really doesn't. I mean, no. It's, so what do we think this watch is going to go for? The estimates between fifty thousand and a hundred thousand, uh, and assuming this watch would uh, be about a. $1,500 to $2,000 watch um, with, without being Elvis's, that's a big premium. Right. You know, 2000 to, honestly, moment of truth, scrap weight, that watch is a scrap watch, in, in, to, to, in my opinion. Uh, I could never sell it, no one's gonna want it, you know? Right. So that's number one, so it's, it's a scrap weight watch uh, versus the Daytona, which would have been worth a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, if it wasn't Paul Newman's. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about just disproportionately, right. you know, valued watches. Right. I mean, to me, it's really all perception. Oh, it's and, all perception. And how we, how we perceive and what we value. One is much more precious than yeah, the other. right. Yeah. You know, one yeah. one is, like yeah. it or not, gold. diamond coated Di- yeah, gold. Sure, and gold, yeah. The other is steel, steel kind yeah. of dirty. Right. You know? It's kind of funny. A knock around watch. There are a lot of guys yeah. that we both know yeah. that if you showed them both those watches, forget Elvis, forget Paul Newman, they, which one's more expensive? The Omega. The Omega. It's a, it's a white gold watch with diamonds. Right. How do you even compare the two? Right. 
you know but it's very it's very funny mm -hmm. you know we've created we've created this weird world but that's it guys thank you so much for watching this yeah. episode of liquor run um if you have any thoughts or memories about colorossi please comment. share them yeah below yeah right? i'm gonna share them with poppy my grandpa yeah. the colorossi aficionado Salud. cheers guys <laughs>